How's it going guys? It is 5.20 a.m. 7th of November 2022 Monday here in Japan and total fucking crackhead right now but I want to knock out a question. Not going to be a lengthy clip. Not going to waste our fucking time. All right. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 49-year-old man, chronic bronchitis, peripheral DNA for the past month. Physical exam shows distended neck veins, auscultation of the chest. Shows a 2 on 6 whole systolic murmur that increases with inspiration. Hemoglobin 18 grams per deciliter. This is polycythemic, normal range in males and non-menstruating women, 13 to 17.5, menstruating women, 12 to 17.5. Question just simply wants to know uh, which the following is most likely diagnosis. So I'll whip through the answer choices here, discuss this as we go. Let's go backwards. Choice E, pulmonic stenosis, wrong fucking answer. Now, whilst pulmonic stenosis, yes, is a right-sided murmur, which would increase with inspiration, okay? Right-sided murmurs increase with inspiration. Uh, you expand the lungs, decrease intrathoracic pressure, you allow for increased venous return to the right heart, okay? So more blood in the right heart, more pronounced murmurs. Although pulmonic stenosis, sure, as I just fucking said, would, in would increase with inspiration because it's right-sided. It's not holosystolic. In theory, it would be mid-systolic. Pretty much non-existent yieldness on USMLE. It could be seen with tetralogy of Fallot, okay, which is DeGeorge syndrome, 22Q11 deletion, so pulmonic stenosis overriding aorta, uh, right ventricular hypertrophy, VSD. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, polycythemia of error, wrong answer. So some students get tripped up with the fact that this patient has polycythemia. However, uh, this is secondary polycythemia due to low oxygen tension. Patient has chronic bronchitis. This is not polycythemia vera. So in this, in this patient, due to low oxygen tension, there's going to be high EPO secretion. Pisithymia vera is a JAK2 mutation. It's primary bone marrow, uh, increased production of cell lines, so increased uh, hematopoietic stem cell production. That's actually an answer on one of the NBME exams. Uh, so we have a suppressed EPO. Okay, So not only will RBCs be high, but we often have an increase in either platelets and or white blood cells as well. They can be normal, but they can be elevated, but their US simile will give you RBCs and high white blood cells, RBCs and high platelets. Okay, they like having combination. And classically, basophilia. Okay, that's pretty buzzy. Like patient gets pruritus, itchiness after getting out of the shower. Okay, you get pain in the fingertips, you know, hyperviscosity syndrome, headache, even Raynaud phenomenon. And serial phlebotomy is the treatment for this. I'd say that's actually the highest yield detail regarding polycythemia is that serial phlebotomy is the treatment. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, mitral regurg, wrong answer. So as I discussed before, uh, this is clearly a right-sided murmur because it, it's accentuated with inspiration. Mitral regurg is left-sided. So, I mean, a lot we could chat about. Most common cause of mitral regurg, I'd say in USMLE, is post-MI papillary or papillary muscle rupture. It can occur within hours, can occur within days. I've seen both. But if a patient has an MI and then all of a sudden has a new onset four and six holosystolic murmur, that's going to be mitral regurg should have papillary muscle rupture. Mitral regurg, of course, can most common cause is actually ischemia. I say on USMLE, post-MI papillary muscle rupture, but in real life, it's actually ischemia. Um, so mitral regurg, uh, as I said before, it's not going to increase with inspiration. So in this case, it's the wrong fucking answer. Choice B, corpulmonal is the correct answer. So corpulmonal, by definition, is right heart failure due to a pulmonary cause. If your left heart has pathology, it's not corpulmonal. You must have a normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, PCWP, which equals your left atrial pressure. Most common cause of right heart failure is left heart failure. Okay, so you have to rule out left heart failure as an etiology for the right heart failure to be able to diagnose corporal manel. So this patient has chronic bronchitis, COPD. So you get increased mucus production, read index. Okay, so blue bloater, you're going to get a shitload of hypoxic vasoconstriction due to chronic bronchitis, hypoxia. So you get a shitload of hypoxic vasoconstriction. Well, that's going to cause pulmonary hypertension, increase afterload on the right ventricle. That's our mechanism for the ensuing right heart decompensation. If we had emphysema, okay, pink puffer, that's loss of alveolar papillary surface area. And that's going to result in uh, increased resistance because you're losing components of your parallel circuitry in the lung. And that in turn would cause increased afterload back up in the right heart core pulmonale. 
This patient has peripheral edema. That's a, a right heart failure finding. JVD, right heart failure finding. Now the canary or the elephant in the room is you say, but wait, why the fuck is there this murmur? That's tricuspid regurge. Okay, now I've harped on this in prior audio cubing questions here on my YouTube where you need to know, weirdly enough, the highest yield cause of tricuspid regurge and USMLE is pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale. It's the first time you're hearing this. You're like, well, that's really fucking weird. Okay, not pulmonic regurge. For whatever fucking reason, it's tricuspid regurge. Okay, so we could... Uh, articulate other uh, etiologies such as IV drug user endocarditis causing uh, tricuspid regurge or even carcinoid syndrome causing tricuspid regurge, but you need to know that pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonale, can cause tricuspid regurge and, as well as a loud P2, okay, pulmonic valve slamming shut due to increased distal pressure. So loud S2 is is synonymous with loud P2 on USMLE. There's no such thing as a loud A2 on USMLE. So loud S2, they can say loud P2, they can say, say loud pulmonic component of S2. So this patient simply has corporal pulmonale, and then, as I said before, increased hemoglobin from the low oxygen tension, secondary polycythemia, okay? Aortic stenosis, wrong fucking answer. That's going to be left-sided as well, and it's going to be mid-systolic almost always, can be described as a late peaking systolic murmur with an ejection click, most common cause, bicuspid, autosomal dominant, bicuspid aortic valve. It's not limited to Turner syndrome with bicuspid valve. And uh, patients can get sad, syncope, angina, dyspnea, a lot we can talk about. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.